that was the very first minute of Kitchen Cabaret. Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, or the theme park evangelist, and my undershirt is driving me crazy right now. Anyway, I absolutely love Epcot. It is one of my absolute favorite Disney theme parks, even though it desperately needs help, and that's why it's actually under some major construction but besides that, I also love Epcot because two of my absolute most favorite festivals go on every single year over there. And they are Epcot's International Flower and Garden Festival and Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. So I started going to both of those events at a very young age. So the Flower and Garden Festival I started going to probably... In the early 2000s, and then the Food and Wine Festival, I know for a very, or without a shadow of a doubt, I started going to, in uh, 2007, every single year until 2018, that was the very last one I ever attended, because in 2019, I moved to Northern Kentucky. One second. So sorry, I had to sneeze. Anyway, well... By the time I moved up here and I started coming every single uh, spring after that, I pretty much started coming either at the very beginning of the flower and garden festival is what I meant, or I would catch the, like, the first day or two of the flower and garden festival, and that's about as far as I got to see of it, or much as I got to see of it. But there's a reason why I'm doing this YouTube video. So why did I show you guys Kitchen Cabaret? Kitchen Cabaret was an old show that actually took place in the Land Pavilion long before I was even before born, or even just a few years before I was born. Kitchen Cabaret, from my understanding, taught guests about the importance of eating properly. I mean, I would have to look it up personally for myself. But Kitchen Cabaret was a pretty cold show. But it started getting a little outdated, old, old-fashioned, whatever, after a while. But let's just look it up for the fun of it. I've always been told that Wikipedia is not exactly the most reliable source, but I'm going to read right here. It's it actually was an opening day attraction, so I apologize. Kitchen Cabaret was a 13-minute audio-animatronic show at Epcot Walt Disney World Resort, United States located in the Land Pavilion. Kitchen Cabaret was present on Epcot's opening day, October 1st, 1982. The host, Bonnie Appetit, or Appetite, whichever, introduced the acts in a musical review and comedy format that advocated healthy eating and provided a primer on the four food groups, meat, dairy, grains, and fruits slash vegetables. The show was replaced in 1994 by Food Rocks, which uh, opened uh, roughly a year, if not less, than af after I was born, which was the show that I, I was, uh, which I grew up with. So, unfortunately, no, I did not actually get to watch Kitchen Cabaret because the show uh, took place long before my time. But I was told by my parents, they're the most well-known song, well song, oh my word, I cannot talk. And Kitchen Cabaret was veggie, veggie, fruit, fruit, veggie, veggie, fruit, fruit. So, if anybody remembers the that song then you'll probably recognize that tune. So I had a more 90s uh, hip-hop show, and where you can charge your phone over by soaring, that's exactly where the show was, and that's also where Kitchen Cabaret was. And Food Rocks lasted a very long time. Now, I could show you guys, just for the fun of it, what Food Rocks was, but first, which I actually, I might, just to be different tonight. So, Food Rocks uh, lasted for quite some time, probably 
eight, nine years, somewhere around there. And uh, it definitely was a very 90s show. And I would say it was probably a little longer. And it had a lot more animatronics. And I personally enjoyed it. I watched it quite a few times myself growing up over the years. But let's go ahead and uh, turn the camera around and I will show you guys Food Rocks. Oh, that was weird. I was like, where's the audio at? Hello, Epcot Center, and welcome to the All-Star Benefit for Good Nutrition. Now put your hands together for the utensils. Oh, my word. It's a queen song. Talk about lame, corny, and clever all at the same exact time. That was the first time I had even seen even the first minute and a half in a long time. I probably have not seen that show since uh, it closed, practically. So, if that says anything, and of course I have not, I mean, the last time I saw it was a kid, so I'm seeing it for the first time as an adult, and I'm like, wow. That was corny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> uh, enough of that. So, yeah, so, as I was saying, those were the uh, two shows that uh, were over at uh, the Lamp Pavilion. And, of course, uh, I've uh, been talking a lot about how Epcot specifically Future World, was designed to be, like, educational. Teach people about this and that and that and this. So, originally, the purpose of the land was to teach people uh, how important it is to take care of your body, as well as it is important to take care of the land that we're given. Yes, the living of the land still exists, uh, the land pavilion, and Hopefully, it will still be around for quite some time, but we'll, we will see. Hopefully, uh, they won't get rid of it and replace it with something else, because it's a quite a big ride. <laughs> but you never know what can happen. Well, Disney also decided that the Food Rocks was uh, needing a replacement as well, and they were like, well, we need to replace it with something else. So Disney started going to the drawing board in the early 2000s, and 2005 is what's known as Disney's basically golden age, is what I like to call it. Disney came out with so many cool things. Like, each of the parks got something brand new. Uh, two of those rides that I'm gonna mention still exist to this day. And those were two of Disney's, like, best rides possible. And, of course, one of them is actually a transfer from another park. And, um, and the other one was actually kind of a copycat ride from another park. However, though, this ride is still original, unique, one of a kind. And also never been added to a Disney park ever and honestly, of the two rides that got brought over to Disney, I would say that this ride it was the uh, better of the two. So Epcot uh, just got soaring. And 
Soaring is a huge ride. And when we first got Soaring, Disney was like, well, we're going to need a very long walkway to get over to it. And we also are going to need a huge entrance. We're also going to need um, a huge ride building for another thing. And originally, what they had was they had just had Concourse A and Concourse B for many, many years. And people would uh, filter down one of those two concourses. When Soaring originally opened with Soaring Over California, which is exactly what they had over in California, and uh, Anaheim to be specific. And uh, that was part of Disney's Golden Celebration. And they decided, well, we don't really need Food Rocks anymore. We want to stick to this throw ride uh, era. So they decided to just gut out Food Rocks altogether. And they replaced that whole entire thing with the entrance to Soaring. And if you did not know, the whole queue line just to get to Soaring, like, if you walked my pace, it would take you exactly 10 minutes just to walk from where Food Rocks was all the way to where the actual ride building is. It's a long walk. It really is. It's like Space Mountain. You don't realize how far of a walk you have to walk from where you got on and off the ride to get back into the actual park. For all I know, when I go on Space Mountain, I might be in a cast member only area. Like, when I uh, get on the ride. I was actually uh, working the Space Mountain exit back in the day when they were gutting out the uh, moving walkway and people were accidentally going into a cast member only area. And actually, if you did go out that way, uh, you were walking through a cast member only area for quite some time. So I'm, I believe I'm right that a good chunk of that area that you're walking to just to get back to the gift shop is all cast member only area as crazy as that is. But the uh, other ride that I mentioned is actually over at animal kingdom and that was expedition Everest. And that's been around for 17 years now. And it's still an extremely popular ride. And they just had its first major refurbishment in a long time. The only mistake that Disney made with that ride was they did not make an accessible area to get to the animatronic Yeti. But, of course, there's a lot of talk about that already online. So it's not like anybody, everybody doesn't know already. So what uh, my basically conclusion is Disney has done a lot uh, done away with a lot of the old uh versions of like things that used to exist at Epcot. I mean for crying out love Club Cool, which we're not gonna go into that. Club Cool originally want they wanted you to feel like you were going through the Arctic and then you came upon this soda shop in the middle of the Arctic. That was the original feel, and then they went to this modern pump or punk or whatever, uh, like modern uh, vibe, hip hop kind of club. And uh, for a long time, they it worked, and then they decided, well, it's still not good enough. Let's redo it again. So who knows how it looks now? I haven't even looked it up on YouTube yet to see how it looks. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I might go do that tonight. So, yeah, I mean, there's just been a lot of changes that have happened at Walt Disney World, specifically Epcot, just in the past several years. And it's sad that they've gotten rid of a lot of the old-fashioned things, a lot of the stuff that I, I grew up with from my childhood and stuff like that. I just pray and hope they never get rid of the music. Uh, this is a fun fact about me. My absolute favorite music in all of Epcot is the Innoventions area music loop. It is the music 
that I've been listening to since a child. I was a child. Also, when I worked in custodial at Epcot, I used to l- work in the interventions area the most. That's also where our like area was that we were responsible for. So whenever you would go towards the land or towards the mission space, on both ends there was an area kind of off to the side that guests cannot see, and that's where the uh, custodians go to take care of the trash. That's also where they go to go get their chemicals. And I primarily focused on the uh, test track area. I focused on the mission space area. I was also in that big circle. I was also responsible for the soaring restroom, the restroom on the downstairs of the land. I also was responsible a lot of the times for club cool. So I got very used to hearing the interventions area music loop. I also used the uh, stairwell that uh, is directly below the uh, interventions area. So uh, to give you guys a better idea of where it is without actually telling you exactly where it is, if you were to go back towards Mission Space and Test Track, there is a door that's underneath one of those uh, old areas that you would take to get to Mission Space. This was, of course, back before all the construction started taking place, and that's kind of where it was at. And I used to go down there a lot to like take breaks, or I would also keep my pan and broom in there if I didn't want it exposed to the public. I also used to step in there if I wanted to, like, play on my phone or something like that. So, just a not kind of a nice secret. It was also uh, relatively close to where the uh, character spot was, if that also makes sense. But once again, this is all changed for the most part since I was working there back in 2019. I absolutely loved working at Epcot. It was one of my favorite parks to work at, if not my favorite park to work at. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved uh, working at the Magic Kingdom, too. I really did, but... Like, I kind of... I feel like I really just enjoyed Epcot the best. There was just so many nice things about Epcot. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to Epcot over the years, and I've just really, really enjoyed it. I've gone to Epcot so many times by myself. I used to sit in the United Kingdom section right next to uh, the lake right there. And I just would sit there and just eat my lunch and just enjoy the breeze. I mean, by far, my favorite park to visit as a guest is the Magic Kingdom. But I still have a lot of good memories with Epcot. And I miss a lot of the old attractions there. And... Yeah, I wish I could uh, go back and revisit those, but I'm I do enjoy a lot of the new things and I will be doing my universe of energy one in about 6 days when Cosmic Rewind opens to the public, praying and hoping that it has good reviews cuz so far I haven't heard many. All right, guys. Well, let me get this edited and uploaded to YouTube and I will see you guys. Tomorrow, Lord willing, at Bucky's. Until then, always remember, you can do all things through Crisis Strength and Zoo. Have a great night. Peace out.